there and welcome to the course. My name is Dr. Ganter and each week I'm going to start off with a short video describing what you should focus on for that week. We're going to cover a huge amount of material this summer. Each, each week in the summer corresponds to two weeks in the fall. So I've broken it up into um, part one and part two for each week and you should sort of treat each one as a separate unit. So let me switch to my screen and I will show you what I'm talking about. For week one, things you need to focus on. In section 1.1, 1. 1, you're going to be finding the difference quotient of a function. And you might want to watch video 4, which explains that. Now, when I say video 4, here's what I'm, here's what I'm referring to. If you go to your course, there's a, there's a section called video lessons. Now, this is from a different semester, so this might not match up with what you see. But when you click on video lessons, the videos are numbered. And so when I say video number four, I'm referring to the fourth video in that section. Okay. Um, so difference quotient, know the shapes of basic uh, functions. So we're going to be transforming these, these basic functions in a, in a later section. So you need to know what these all look like. If you're not sure, you can graph them on Desmos. Desmos is a free graphing calculator, and I'll show you that too. So this is what it looks like. And if you're not sure what a function looks like, you just type it in, y equals x cubed, and there you go. There aren't very many functions, uh, sorry, aren't, aren't very many problems where you're going to need a graphing calculator in this class. But when you do need one, you may as well use a free one. All right, section 1.2, um, finding domains of rational functions and writing the, the domain in both inequality and interval notation. So I suggest you watch those, the, all those videos, especially three and four, if you're not familiar or if you've forgotten the difference between interval notation and inequality notation. Now, what's a rational function? If you don't know what these words mean, then what I'm saying sounds like Greek to you, huh? So a rational function is a quotient of polynomials. So maybe something like x squared plus 2x over x minus 3, x plus 4. That would be a rational function. And inequality notation is uh, exactly that. It's, it's expressed in inequality. So maybe x greater than 3. And if you want to write that as an interval, that would be 3 comma infinity. All right. And given a piecewise defined graph of a piecewise defined function, write down a formula for it. So that's an important skill that you'll need in this course, and that's video number seven. A piecewise defined function is defined in pieces, like f of x equals maybe x if x is greater than 1, and 3x plus 2 if x uh, is less than 1. Okay, section 1.4, find the composition of two functions, and more importantly, be able to simplify it. So if the functions are rational, you want to be able to simplify the composition. So that's typically the part that causes trouble. So I actually created a video, and I strongly suggest you watch video number five for that. Now, composition has two different notations, f composed with g of x, or you could write it f round circle g of x. Those mean the same thing. All right, that's the first half of the week. I know, buckle your seatbelt. This is a lot of information. The first two weeks is basically review of algebra, so we go through quite a bit of material. So for part two, we want to talk about vertical and horizontal shifts of the basic graphs that you learned about in part one. So that's video three. And then reflections about the x-axis and the y-axis. Section 1.6, solve absolute value inequalities of both types. So this is super important, and I just you watch video number four. Each, each homework problem also has a video attached to it, but the videos in the video lesson tend to be a little bit longer and more thorough. So when I say both types, I mean something like you're going to solve um, absolute value inequalities that look like maybe I'm just going to make something simple up. X plus three less than two versus absolute value of X plus three greater than two. So you're going to solve those in different ways, and that's explained in video four. Okay, find the inverse of a function, and then 
video one sort of a long video that just explains in general about inverse functions and then in terms of algebra the tricky one is finding the inverse of a rational function and so you might want to watch video three for that again rational function quotient of polynomials all right the most important section in this week is section 2.2 which is all about lines so this is going to be very important especially if you take calculus so I'm just going to, I put here in this box, a summary of all about lines, what you need to know. And so I'm just going to walk you through this and then we'll, we'll uh, end this video. By the way, if I'm, if I'm going too slow for you, there's a little gearbox on the bottom right corner of YouTube. And if you click on that gearbox, you can um, change the speed at which I'm talking. And so you can run me double speed if this is going too slow. All right. Slope of a line passing through two points. Uh, rise over run, change in y over change in x, rise over run. Now, if x1 is equal to x2, then that means the line, so, so that means you'll be dividing by zero here, which is um, gives you an undefined number, and that's a vertical line. So vertical lines have undefined slope, Whereas horizontal lines, if y1 equals y2, then you have zero in the numerator, and zero in the numerator of a fraction gives you zero. If um, you've got two lines and they each have slope m1 and m2 respectively, then those lines are parallel when the slopes are equal, m1 equals m2. And they're perpendicular if the slopes, um, are related by negative the reciprocal. So m2 is negative 1 over m1, as long as m1 is not 0. So negative the reciprocal. Sometimes that's written m1, m2 equals negative 1. The product is negative 1. OK, equations of lines. Slope intercept, that means y equals mx plus b. M is the slope, B is the y-intercept. So that's a good name for it. We call it slope-intercept form. Point-slope is, if you're given a point and the slope on a line, you can write the equation as y minus y1 is m times x minus x1, where x1, y1 is a point on the line, and m is the slope. Now typically you're going to want to do both. So typically in calculus we'll have, we'll find the slope using calculus and then we'll have a point on the line and we'll write it like this. And then if you solve for y, you can write it like that. Horizontal lines through a comma b. So here's a horizontal line through a comma b. The y coordinate is constant. So this is y equals b. And if it's a vertical line through that same point, then the x coordinate is fixed, and that's x equals a. Okay, that's it. Have a great week.